What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Disacoder here and today I'm going to be bringing to you guys a couple of neat interactions and rulings that have been asked to me a lot throughout my uh, dueling book judge calls that I take about Infernoble. Uh, this is a new deck that has come out uh, in the past couple weeks and it's been seeing a lot of competitive play on like online tournaments or on dueling book ranked and stuff like that and there's a lot of interactions with these cards that I don't think are all that complicated or things like that but that have been asked to me a lot and I just wanted to demystify a lot of the ruling questions that have been asked and make certain interactions clear and also bring to you guys a couple interactions that you might not know so that if you go against this deck or you play this deck you'll know all the interactions that you need to know when playing so that you don't have to like interrupt your games calling a judge or even like make a couple of misplays if you don't know if a card works a certain way or a certain other way so i've pulled out a list of cards here that are all cards that i'm going to be talking about for these rulings and a couple of these are quite Interesting. So the first one that I am going to be talking about is the interaction with uh, Infernoble Arms Durendal against cards like Ghost Ogre or like Cosmic Cyclone. So Durendal has the effect that uh, if it's equipped to a monster, you can add a level 5 or lower fire warrior monster to your hand. So it's kind of like a Rota and then it sends itself to the graveyard. Uh, if you activate the effect of Durendal and your opponent chains Ghost Ogre, Cosmic Cyclone, MST, any sort of card that would remove the Durendal from the field, uh, if the Durendal is not face up on the field when you would add your card, the uh, card resolves without effect, so you won't successfully be able to add a level 5 or lower Fire Warrior monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, the reason for this, and not everyone is aware of this, equip spells work similarly to continuous spells and field spells when it comes to uh, needing to be on the field in order to successfully resolve their effect. So if an equip spell has an activated effect, so something like Durendal or like Arfredutir, uh, you need to have that card be face up on the field when it would resolve its chain link in order for the effect to resolve successfully. So if Ogre Cosmic Cyclone removes Durendal from the field before it resolves, Durendal will resolve without effect and you won't get the add. Uh, moving forward, we have a neat interaction with Infernoble Knight Reno. So Reno has the effect that if you control a Fire Warrior monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way, treat this card as a tuner. So uh, I had a call the other day where a player summoned Reno that way, so it should be treated as a tuner. And then on resolution of the summon, the opponent used infinite impermanence to negate the effect of the Reno. So in a situation like this, the question that was asked to me is, is Reno still treated as a tuner or not treated as a tuner? In a situation like this, Reno will still be treated as a tuner. And this infinite impermanence could be anything, could be Valor, could be Skill Drain. Even if the Skill Drain is face up on the field before the Reno is even summoned, the Reno will still be treated as a tuner because uh, cards like infinite impermanence, cards like effect Valor, will not remove the fact that Reno is treated as a tuner if summoned this way. Now, as opposed to a card like uh, Gearsu the Orcus to Mech Knight, that card, I'll pull it up for you guys here, the Gearsu is only treated as a tuner after having used its on-field effect. If that effect was used and you successfully summon the tokens to both fields and then it treats, it treats itself as a tuner, if it gets impermanence at that point, it will lose its tuner status because this is an activated effect that was applied on the field as opposed to Reno being uh, given the tuner status if summoned a specific way. So because of the, the difference of how it gains that tuner status, in the case of Reno, it will not lose it if it gets met by infinite impermanence. Moving on with Smoke Grenade of the Thief, everyone's favorite hand loop card. Uh, Smoke Grenade of the Thief has the effect where uh, when the Sigup spell card uh, is active and is destroyed by a card effect, look at your opponent's hand, select one card from their hand, and discard it to the graveyard. Now, because it says discard it to the graveyard, I've had a lot of calls of people wondering if you could legally discard a monster from the opponent's hand to the graveyard under Herald of the Arclight, because Herald says any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. In a situation like this, uh, Smoke Grenade of the Thief will work similarly to a card like Foolish Burial and things like that. If a card sends from deck, from hand, or whatever to the graveyard for an effect, you can still do that under effects like Herald, under Macrocosmos. They will simply get banished instead of going to the graveyard, as opposed to it being like a cost. Like for example, the Ghost Ogre, we know that it has to be sent from hand or field to the graveyard to activate its effect. You can't pay that cost from hand under Herald because the card will never be able to go to the graveyard. But Smoke Grenade is an effect, so because it's an effect and not a cost to send the monster from the hand to the graveyard, you can legally do it under Herald of the Arclight. Now, I have two interesting rulings for Noble Arms Arfidutir. I'm going to butcher this card's name, I already know. But Arfidutir has uh, an effect where it can target a set spell trap on the field 
and destroy it. But specifically the wording on this card, it says, it says, it says you can target one card your opponent controls, the equipped monster loses exactly 500 attack, and if it does, destroy that target. So Noble's, Noble Arms Arfidutir works similarly to um, the Atlantean Marksman in the sense that if it targets a set card your opponent controls, and then that card is flipped, chained, so say it's that there can be only one, and they flip that there can be only one, Arfidutir will not still destroy the card because it destroys specifically that target. And that target refers to one set card your opponent controls. So if the card is not still set when you would destroy it, it is no longer that target. Therefore, Arfidutir loses its target and doesn't successfully destroy the card. Uh, the other interesting interaction with Arfa Dutir is it says equip only to a warrior type monster. Now the rule I'm going to give to you guys is universal for all equip spells that have a specific uh, requirement or a restriction that it can only be equipped to a specific type of card, name of card, like attribute of card and stuff like that. So if a card says equip only to a warrior monster or equip only to an X archetype monster and stuff like that, that still needs to remain true even after the card is equipped for it to remain equipped. What I mean by that is because Arfidut here needs to be equipped specifically only to a warrior type monster, if you do equip Arfidut here to a warrior type monster, and then your opponent act, like activates something like Zombie World or summons Buster Dragon, anything that would change the type of your monster for it to no longer be a warrior. If your monster's type changes from warrior to something else, even after Arfa Dutir is already equipped, the Arfa Dutir will destroy itself and send itself to the graveyard. Because the restriction of being able to only be equipped to a warrior monster is continuous and it doesn't like you can't bypass that after it's been already equipped. So it continuously checks the type or the attribute or the name of your monster to make sure that that uh, restriction is still being met all throughout the time that it is equipped. So if the uh, type of the monster changes and it's no longer a warrior, if the equip spell will destroy itself and send itself to the graveyard. So uh, an interesting thing about equip spells just overall in general is that if an equip spell is uh, equipped to a monster, and that monster leaves the field. So say you, you have your Arfa Dutir equipped to like an Isold, and the Isold is sent to the graveyard, the Arfa Dutir is treated as being destroyed. So I know a lot of the uh, Noble Arms uh, equip spells have stuff like this. If this face-up card in the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one warrior type Noble Knight monster, equip this card to that target. So say you have uh, the Arfa Dutir equipped to a monster, and that monster leaves the field, the, and you have another like a Noble Knight monster that you could equip the Arfa Dutir to, you can still activate the effect of the Arfa Dutir in the graveyard to equip it to your Noble Knight monster because uh, it is treated as being destroyed. So anytime an equip spell is equipped to a monster and the monster is equipped to leaves the field, the equip spell is considered destroyed, not simply sent to the graveyard. So that can be important for certain interactions such as this. And the last interaction that I want to bring to you guys has to do with the card Living Fossil. Uh, this is a an extender that is pretty interesting that I've seen a lot of players use for for like reborning stuff like uh, Herald of the Arclight, which is pretty it's, it's a pretty neat interaction. And a lot of people were asking because Living Fossil says uh, the equipped monster loses a thousand attack and defense. Also, its effects are negated. A lot of people were asking whether or not the Living Fossil would negate the effect of Herald of the Arclight if Arclight activates its effect uh, while being equipped with the Living Fossil. So in a situation like this, if Living Fossil reborns the Herald of the Arclight uh, and you activate the effect of Herald of the Arclight, it is no longer equipped by the Living Fossil at that point. So the Herald of the Arclight, because it tributes itself for cost, it will get banished and it will be able to uh, still negate the opponent's uh, card effect because the Living Fossil is no longer equipped to it when it resolves its effect, therefore it's no longer being negated by the Living Fossil. As opposed to something like Fire Flint Lady, which has the effect that it can send itself uh, from the field to the graveyard as cost, you will not be able to use the effect of Fire Flint Lady if it's equipped with Living Fossil, for the simple reason that the uh, Fire Flint Lady will not be able to go to the graveyard because Living Fossil says that the monster, if it leaves the field, it gets banished instead. So in the case of reborning a Herald of the Arclight, you'll still be able to negate something successfully, the Herald will simply be banished, but it tributes itself for cost so that there's no problem there but the fire flint lady would not be able to activate its effect 
So that is all I have for you guys for interactions with Infernoble Knights and cards surrounding that archetype and stuff like that. If you have any other questions about Infernoble Knight cards or any ruling questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will check those out when I go around, when I get around to it. I try to look at the comments as much as I can. I know I don't get around to all of them, but I try my best, guys. So anyways, if you want to check out my Twitch channel, check out twitch.tv slash disencoder. I stream almost every single day. So have a good one, boys. Peace out, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!